Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Chips and Salsa, where we cover security topics at Intel with Intel subject matter experts. And I'm Jerry. Hey, hey, I'm Krobe. And today's episode is the first in a planned series uh, to introduce you to the Intel Storm team. And Storm stands for Strategic Offensive Research and Mitigations. And this team is involved in many aspects of security at Intel. They sure are, Jerry. We get to work with them a lot. And today, our special guest is Enrique Kawakami. He manages this team of elite hackers, and he's here today to give us a glimpse into the storm. Well, hi, Enrique. Welcome to the show. Hello. Uh, Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to be the manager of the storm team here at Intel? Sure, sure. Thank you for um, the opportunity to um, tell more about the team and myself. Um, So I have been involved in hardware security since I was in college. Um, And um, I've been doing that uh, for uh, hardware uh, cryptographic modules such as HSMs. And um, and now I'm looking into CPUs. So even as a manager, I take um, some hours every week to do real research, um, the the most that I can. And and I was lucky enough to be at Intel when the Storm team was formed about four years ago. Uh, we had a meltdown inspector at the time, so very fun times for, for researchers. Mm-hmm. And um, um, and then we we did uh, a lot of work in, in uh, triaging and, and learning about the new uh, spectrum meltdown variations and all the transient execution attacks that came after. Um, I, I left the team for a while, and then I came back last year as a manager of the team. Um, invited by Sorrow and, and, and my colleagues. Um, and it's a team that I, I really enjoy working. Um, like personally, they are all great people and we really enjoy um, our work together. So um, could you maybe give us a high level overview of what the Storm Team's charter is? Yeah, sure, sure. So we have uh, we have two major areas that we, uh, so we have special names, we call it reactive research is one of the areas. So this is where we, as the name says, we react to things that are externally reported um, by external researchers or sometimes even internal researchers. So we are not the ones finding the issues. Um, in these cases, we need to look at um, what they, they're they claiming the issue is and we try to replicate and we try to root cause um, and then uh, test how, um, what is the severity of the issue? So how it could be exploited in practice um, to know how we should mitigate it. Uh, of course, this is not only um, our team's work. We work together with product teams and other engineers, architects. Um, and when when things are, are, are um, understood and mitigations are made, we usually also get involved in testing uh, the effectiveness of the patches or uh, fixes um, before they're shipped to customers. So this is um, where we spend, I would say, um, maybe 10% of our time, but it's a very high uh, priority and urgent issues, right? We cannot afford to uh, 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 delay or or to postpone things that are reported externally. Um, And the other area is proactive research, where we look for new issues and new classes of issues. Um, we also develop tools for finding new issues or think about new mitigations for issues that are um, known. Um, and this is where we spend most of our time. We have uh, many different areas. We look at CPU, we look at graphics, um, also platforms and, and uh, um, things like uh, microcode or um, the internals of the CPU itself. Um, And uh, in this area, you also have things um, that we look that are really in the future. So um, new types of mitigations or uh, tool chains and uh, um, that are going that could be embedded in compilers or um, open source projects. So the issues are not created in the first place. And for that, we even have a a sub team called Spear led by uh, João Moreira and um, I think he would be the one um, to explain that better, but um, I guess he could also be uh, invited for this show. Mm. I love it. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, so we often refer to the folks on your team as offensive security researchers. Uh, what does that mean from your perspective? Yeah, that that has a different might have different meanings. So for um, for our team, the, so the, I'm sorry, not trying to define this for the industry, right? For our team, we consider that um, an offensive security researcher should be able to look at um, systems from a black box perspective. So um, even though in Intel we have all the documentation and source code, we need to have the skills to look at them when we don't have all of the documentation or not all the source code, because sometimes for uh, um, urgency or even for um, the time it takes for understanding some types of documentation, we need to, um, to to know how to look at them from the black box perspective. And the other uh, big thing is to know how to write what we call uh, proof of concepts, which are uh, art, soft artifacts that can um, replicate or test how a vulnerability would be exploited in a real um, world scenario so so that we know how attackers could use it or how uh, mitigations would be effective um, so i think this is a key point knowing how to write uh, the pocs the proof of concepts mm -hmm. so you know we've the term security researcher is very broad and used in different contexts around the industry so if you were looking to bring on a new researcher, what types of skills or experience does the team look for? Yeah, this is something I've been learning a lot recently. Uh, of course, we need someone with background in security. Uh, but for this specific team, I would say we, we need people who can also uh, learn by themselves and, and solve problems that were not solved before. Um, so, for example, as I mentioned, the Spectre meltdown case, we still have new types of microarchitecture issues, and they're new. So there's no prior information on how to test them or how to mitigate. And um, so you need to be able to look at a problem and, and solve it by yourself. Uh, of course, we have teams and we have other people to help, but this is, I think, uh, a key skill that we're looking for. And the other thing is, um, is to know the the fundamentals and and the basics of the uh, technology you're, you're looking. So, if you're doing CPU research, you need to know how CPU works, how you know pipelines work, how you need to know the basics. The same goes for software, for compilers, or a kernel. Uh, so we look at people who own, not only have um, security background but also know. Um, that are, in, in some sense, um, good engineers. They know how things work, how, how the internals work. I think that is very important. So um, you, you mentioned, you talked about engaging across the company. Um, do you work with other teams inside Intel on red team events? Or you know, do you run your own hackathons or whatever in, internally? Yeah, this is something we are uh, ramping up. Historically, we haven't been too involved in hackathons, but we're starting. Mm -hmm. And of course, we need to collaborate with red teams when we're looking at uh, some of their um, technologies that they're covered. Um, but but yeah, we, we were starting and we also creating our own hackathons for some specific topics. So um, red teams um, uh, will be invited and other teams will be invited as well for some of the um, topics we have. Okay. That's awesome. So uh, does the Storm team monitor trends around real world uh, tactics, techniques, and procedures being employed by various threat apps? Yeah, that, that is a good question. So as I mentioned, I think our team was created to look ahead. So it's really important for us to know what is happening outside. Um, a lot of what is considered um, new breakthrough research sometimes can be at least partially anticipated if you, if, if you pay attention to what is happening. So usually there are many incremental advancements in technologies and research. And if, if you're following what happens, you can try to guess what will be the next step. And you can start looking at your products before you know someone um, outside um, discovers something. So this is something we do um, on a frequent basis. And we're, of course, always trying to improve. But this is, uh, I think, an important part of our work. Yeah, um, TTPs are very pops within the threat community. Now, how does that inform the team's work at all? Is it 
Have you had to change course in what you're researching because something new, some new tactic or technique comes up? Yes, yes, that that happens. So, um, for example, just an example here, not that it happened, but let's say someone creates a new technique, like imagine Roll Hammer when it appeared. Um, we we need to stop right what what we're doing and and see around uh, is this going to uh what is going to affect us and and how what are the advancements that we see for this new type of attack um and this doesn't happen every day but we it happened a few times um in the recent past and not um especially for microarchitecture attacks we need to pay attention and to um, to follow it to see what are the uh, what are the implications when someone uncovers a new type of attack. Yeah, always be prepared. I guess would be also yeah. your motto. Yes. Um, well, I think that's all the questions we had, uh, Enrique. Thank you so much for uh, joining us today and uh, okay. giving us an overview of the Storm Team. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, that was a great overview of the Storm team from Henrique and the awesome work that they do here. It sure was, Jerry. I mean, if um, the folks would like to see an example of the work the team has done, um, Enrique, Alyssa Milborn, and Ki Sun recently published a uh, paper to Arvix titled, You Can't Always Win the Race, Analyzing the L-Fence Jump Mitigation for uh, Branch Target Injection. Uh, the team conducted this research at the request of our industry mitigation partners and recently published it for the benefit of the entire industry. You can find a link right here. Yeah, and I can't wait to bring other members of the team yeah. on in uh, the show in the future. But that's a wrap for this episode of Chips and Salsa, and we want to thank Henrique for joining us today. And on behalf of Krobo and myself, thank you all for watching.